In my last video I have explained probability spaces. A probability space is a non-empty set omega together with the sigma algebra f and a probability measure p. In this video we will take a little closer look at the second element of a probability space, the sigma algebra f. First of all I will show you how a sigma algebra is defined. Let omega be some non-empty set and let p of omega represent its power set. The power set of omega is the set of all subsets of omega. Then a subset f of the power set, that means f is a set of subsets of omega, is called a sigma algebra if it satisfies the following three properties. F contains the sample space. That means omega is an element of F. F is closed under complements. That means if A is an element of F, then the complement of A is also an element of F. F is closed under countable unions. That means if the sets AI are in F, for I is equal to 1, 2 and so on, then the countable union of these sets is also an element of F. Ok, let me sum up. A sigma algebra F is a subset of the power set which contains the sample space which is closed under complements and which is closed under countable unions. Before I will show you some examples of sigma algebras we will prove the following corollary. If F is a sigma algebra then the sigma algebra F is closed under countable intersections. That means if the sets AI are in F for I is equal to 1, 2 and so on, then the countable intersection of these sets is also in F. Let's prove this corollary. Let AI be in F, for I is equal to 1, 2 and so on. It follows from property 2 that the complements of these sets AI are also in F, for I is equal to 1, 2 and so on. It follows from property 3 that the union of these complements is in F. Now we use property 2 again and get that the complement of this union is an element of F. But the complement of this union is equal to the intersection of the sets AI and this is an element of F, because the complement is an element of F. Here we have used De Morgan's law. We have shown now that the sigma algebra F is closed under countable intersections. Ok, let's take a look at some examples of sigma algebras now. Let omega be a non-empty set. The family consisting only of the empty set and the set omega 
is a sigma algebra. It's called the trivial sigma algebra over omega. The power set P of omega is a sigma algebra. It's called the discrete sigma algebra. The power set is a sigma algebra because the set omega is a subset and complements and unions of subsets are subsets again, so an element of the power set, which contains all subsets of omega. So the power set of omega is a sigma algebra, which is called the discrete sigma algebra. Let A be a subset of omega. Then the set consisting of the empty set, the set A, the complement of A and the set omega is a sigma algebra. Let's check this. So omega is in the set. The complement of each subset is in the set again, because the complement of the empty set is equal to omega, which is in the set. The complement of A is in the set. The complement of the complement of A is equal to A, which is in the set. And the complement of omega is equal to the empty set which is an element of the set again. So that set is closed under complements. Because F3 is finite, we only have to check if F3 is closed under finite unions. Unions with the empty set or the sample space omega are uninteresting because the result will be the subset again or the sample space omega. So we only have to check if the union of A and its complement is in the set again. The union of A and its complement is equal to omega, which is in F3 again. So F3 is a sigma algebra. Okay, let's take a look at sigma algebras generated by a set now. Let T be an arbitrary family of subsets of omega. Then there exists a unique smallest sigma algebra which contains every set in T. Please note that T may or may not itself be a sigma algebra. This smallest sigma algebra is called the sigma algebra generated by T and it is denoted like that, sigma of T. Actually, the sigma algebra generated by T consists of all the subsets of omega that can be made from elements of T by a countable number of complement, union and intersection operations. In our last example, F3 would be the sigma algebra generated by the subset A. F3 is the smallest sigma algebra containing the subset A. Let's take a look at sigma algebras which are generated by countable partitions of the sample space. Let's see be an at most countable partition of the set omega. So C could look like that. 
where the indexing set i is at most countable. At most countable means that the partition is either finite or countable. Partition means that the subsets CI are non-empty and pairwise disjoint and the union of all the subsets CI has to be equal to the sample space omega. Then the collection of all at most countable unions of sets in the partition C, including the empty set, is a sigma algebra. It's the sigma algebra generated by the partition C. So the collection of all the at most countable unions of elements taken from the partition C is a sigma algebra. It's the smallest sigma algebra which contains the partition C. Okay, let's consider finite or countable sample spaces now. Let omega be at most countable. Then every sigma algebra over omega is generated by a partition of omega. That means if f is a sigma algebra over the at most countable set omega, then there exists a partition C of omega so that f is equal to the sigma algebra generated by that partition, which is equal to the collection of all the countable unions of elements taken from the partition C. Or in other words, you can write down every sigma algebra over an at most countable set by finding all the partitions of that set. This is especially helpful if you want to find sigma algebras of finite sets. Let's try this out. Let's consider the set omega is equal to 1, 2, 3 and 4. We take a look at the following partition C. C consists of the following subsets. Now this here is C1, that here is C2 and this here is C3. The sigma algebra generated by that partition is the collection of all unions of elements taken from the partition. So the sigma algebra generated by the partition is equal to the set that consists of the empty set C1, C2, C3, the union of C1 and C C2, the union of C1 and C3, the union of C2 and C3, and the union of C1 and C2 and C3, which is equal to omega. In a similar manner, you can find every other sigma algebra over the set omega. You write down a partition and then you combine the partition elements to form the sigma algebra. Now that we know how the sigma algebras over an at most countable set look like, we will take a look at an example of a sigma algebra over an uncountable set. Let omega be Rn. The sigma algebra which is generated by all the open sets of Rn is called the Borel sigma algebra over Rn. It is usually denoted like that. So the Borel sigma algebra over Rn is the sigma algebra which is generated by all the open sets of Rn. This sigma algebra is not generated by a partition of Rn. 
there is also a more general definition of the Borel sigma algebra. If you have a topological space, then the Borel sigma algebra is the sigma algebra that is generated by the topology. Let's take a look at another example. Another example would be the collection of subsets of omega which are countable or whose complements are countable. This is a sigma algebra. That sigma algebra is distinct from the power set of omega if and only if omega is uncountable. It is the sigma algebra generated by the singletons of omega. Okay. I hope you now understand sigma algebras a little better. My next video will be about the last element of a probability space, the probability measure P. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. That would help and motivate me to keep creating videos.